What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we'll be looking at five exercises for a slap tear in the shoulder. So if you've injured the labrum of your shoulder, then you'll want to stay tuned for today's exercises. Before I get into the exercises, I just want to explain a little bit about slap tears in the shoulder. Again, these affect the labrum. The labrum is a piece of cartilage that goes around the socket of our shoulder, shoulder joint. You'll remember that the shoulder is a ball and socket joint. We have the humeral head and then the socket part is called the glenoid, which is part of your shoulder blade. And the labrum is going to go around that. It helps to deepen the socket and provide stability to the shoulder joint. A slap tear means a superior labral tear, so on the top of the labrum, and it means anterior and posterior, basically forward and back of the labrum. So on the top and forward and back. There are different types of labral tears. You might have heard of bank cart tears. There's different types. The exercises in today's video will help with a slap tear, but they can help with other types of labral tears. Even if you just have shoulder joint pain or pain in your shoulder, these exercises can be helpful. So let's go ahead and get into the first one. For our first exercise, we are going to strengthen the shoulder external rotators, which are two of our rotator cuff muscles on the back side of our shoulder blade, infraspinatus and teres minor. I'm going to do this in standing with a band, but you can also do this in side lying with a dumbbell. I've got another video that shows that. I'll put a link down in the description if you want to see some other variations. With this one here, I'm going to use a piece of resistance tubing. I'll also put a link for a set of this in the description if you need to get some. For this exercise, I'm going to pretend like my left arm has the labral tear. I'm going to stand with tension on the band with it tied at about waist level. I'm going to start with my arm so that my hand is against my stomach. Keeping my elbow pinned to my side, I'm going to turn out into external rotation. Again, this will strengthen the two muscles on the back side of, of my left shoulder blade. And then I'm going to allow it to come back in nice and slow through that eccentric contraction. So think about two to three seconds on the way out and then maybe three to four seconds on the way in. For this exercise, I want you to shoot for three sets of 10 to 15 repetitions. Basically find a color of resistance tubing that is challenging so that you get fatigued within 10 to 15 repetitions, but doesn't create more than moderate pain. All right, this is our first one, shoulder external rotation. Again, thinking about three sets of 10 to 15 repetitions. Our next exercise will be for the shoulder internal rotators. I'm gonna to switch to my right arm here so that you can see what I'm doing, but basically just do these all on your affected side. For a lot of these strengthening exercises, it's actually good to do them on the other side as well. But for shoulder internal rotation, I'm gonna start with my arm out with tension on the band. And this time, my internal rotators are gonna to have to overcome the resistance of the band to pull my shoulder into internal rotation and then I'm going to slowly go out don't let the band snap you back again three to four seconds on the eccentric where I'm going back to the start position and then two to three seconds on the concentric portion where I'm stretching the band this is just like the last one we're going to do three sets of 10 to 15 repetitions to strengthen our shoulder internal rotators which is primarily our subscapularis rotator cuff muscle. The next exercise is a lateral raise. You're gonna take two dumbbells, again a weight that's challenging but doesn't create more than moderate discomfort. Stand with your arms at your sides and you're going to raise up to shoulder level, hold for a second and then nice and slow and controlled on the way back down. Like the other ones, you can think about two to three seconds on the way up and then a little longer eccentric three to four seconds on the way down. This is going to strengthen our deltoid muscle, but it will also help strengthen our supraspinatus muscle, which is one of our rotator cuff muscles. For a lot of these exercises, we're just strength we're thinking about strengthening the shoulder in multiple planes of motion. If we can implement multi-planar strengthening, it helps to improve neuromuscular control and stability, which is the primary focus in physical therapy in people who have labral tears. All right, so this is our third exercise, a lateral raise. For the next exercise, you want to use your bed, uh, a table, or maybe just a weight bench. It works well to be off of the ground a little bit for this one. So what I'm gonna do, again, thinking about my left arm, I'm gonna lay towards the edge of the table so that my left arm can hang off. And from here, I'm gonna rest my head and then lift my arm out. So all the way down, starting down here, pointing towards the ground and then lifting straight up. This is called a prone T. You can add a dumbbell to this over time if you need to, but in the beginning, just start with arm weight and go for, again, three sets of 10 to 15 repetitions. 
you're thinking about squeezing the backs, the muscles on the back side of your shoulder. So we have posterior deltoid, we have our, again, our rotator cuff muscles, infraspinatus and teres minor, and then also the muscles in between our shoulder blade and our spine, our middle trapezius and rhomboids. Again, we're looking at strengthening the shoulder joint in multiple planes, which will help to boost joint stability. This one, like the others, go for three sets of 10 to 15 repetitions. All right, this is our last exercise. It's gonna be the only one that's weight bearing, which is gonna make it a little more challenging. The five exercises in this video are common ones that we give to people with labral tears, but again, just remember, this is just a sample of what you might be, pre be prescribed. The program in my book has a much more comprehensive labral tear program, so that could be useful if you're going through this. For this particular exercise, you're gonna go onto your um, hands, just like push-up position, and what you're gonna do is put your feet out a little bit wider to start with, kind of tighten your core, move your shoulder blades through protraction and retraction, try to find the kind of middle spot, not fully at the top, not fully at the bottom, kind of right in the middle. And then what you're gonna do is work on stabilizing with your injured shoulder. So if my left shoulder has the slap tear, I'm gonna try to stabilize there and then reach over and tap with my right arm. So I'm gonna reach up, tap, I really have to stabilize with that shoulder and my core. If you get, if that's really tiring, you can just alternate too. Kind of go back and forth sometimes. I like to do that. It's a great core workout and a great shoulder stability exercise. So just go back and forth, nice and controlled. Try to keep that ball of the shoulder locked right in the socket, keep it stable there. With this one, go back and forth. See if you can get around 20 repetitions so that you have 10 on each arm. If you're just doing only the injured arm, kind of up and down, then you would just go for 10 and then maybe rest for one minute or so and then do two more sets. Again, thinking about three sets of 10 repetitions. Thanks for checking out today's video. I hope the exercises are helpful to you. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments section. One last thing, my book is available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. It has more comprehensive rehab programs for the 50 most common orthopedic injuries and pain issues. Each body region has its own chapter. If we look in the shoulder chapter, you'll find this shoulder instability program that is specifically for people with labral tears, shoulder dislocations, any of these problems that can cause instability in the shoulder joint. Each of the program takes you through three phases of rehab and has pictures of me doing the exercises. They are more comprehensive programs and are similar to what you'd get if you came to see me in physical therapy. So if you'd like a resource that you can have at home that allows you to do your own rehab, I will put a link for the book down in the description. See you guys in the next video. Bye.